What's up? A little tune? Tune? A morning tune. <laughs> what a morning. It's completely slick out there. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. <clears throat> it is New Year's Eve. Um, and across the world, that means a very different thing than it does in, in the Florida Keys. Down here in the Florida Keys, New Year's Eve means to a lot of us the last day of grouper season. Um, our grouper season lasts from May 1st to December 31st. They close it um, January through the end of April. But uh, it is beautiful, perfect weather. It's calm. It's actually pretty chilly. It's like 64 out. Um, which is cold for us, but uh, long story short, last day of grouper season, we're going to head out and uh, try our luck and see if we can find maybe some grouper action to end the, end the season with. So we're getting up. Uh, we're headed down to the boat here shortly, so we will see you there. Just in case. So we are on our first spot, um, 55 feet-ish, kind of just a roll off, a little bit of life going on there. Um, today's agenda, like I said, last day of grouper season, um, obviously is to hopefully get a grouper. We we brought the Wahoo stuff just in case, Malin says she's not concerned so much with grouper and she would love to shoot a Wahoo, but don't want to get too ahead of ourselves and make too many plans, we're kind of just going to go with the flow. Um, Wahoo is open year round. Like I said, grouper closes tomorrow or tonight at midnight. So I'd like to get one more grouper if possible. And um, as of right now, we're planning to go recreational. Again, I don't want to make plans. You make plans, you get disappointed. If by some chance it's really good, maybe we'll end up going commercial and make a little bit of money today. But um, like I said, we are in our first spot. Water looks good. It's hard to tell because it's early. I can see the bottom at about 50. We're drifting out to about Kind of sliding out here about almost 60 feet um so i'm gonna get suited up and we'll see you in the water so there's a little bit of current running out to the east that's why i got that tagline out you ready back underwater everybody as always I appreciate you tuning in we're gonna talk about a couple dives so the water you can see is really clear 60 feet ish I can see the bottom and I actually put the flashers out because we were kind of on the deep edge of where it drops off to about a hundred or so so you never know what might swim by so I threw the flashers out but um, I actually had Madeline help me uh, with some third-person footage and I want to do an entire episode of this but this uh, I had her film just so you could see my entry I did this a couple times just floating on the surface relaxing and when I'm ready to go I do a couple of flutter kicks use that momentum in my weight roll into my dive tuck my head and down I go and uh, the entry is a big part of your dive it's um, if you're doing it incorrectly, you can expend a lot of energy um, flailing and trying to get under the surface. If you're not weighted properly, if you're not using your momentum and rolling properly, um, it really can affect affect your dives for, in a negative way. But this is very first drop. I can see some nice mangroves around, and you know I love mangroves, but something I do enjoy is picking one species and targeting it. Um, and obviously I spoke about it this day. We had black grouper on the mine, so that's what I was looking for. Nice chunky bottom, lots of life, yellowtails, mangroves. There was a nice uh, big white margate there. I uh, just didn't see any of the fish that I wanted to. I did, um, I think, two or three more dives on this spot, but I didn't see a single grouper. 
So we decided to head on to the next. First spot, no dice. Uh, lots of life, lots of really nice mangroves, but that's not what I'm after. Mangroves are open year round. Um, so I'm gonna move down a little bit and try another spot. So this is our next spot, a little deeper, 66, probably closer to 70. The transducer sits down in the boat, but just kind of chunky hard bottom, a little bit of life. Let's take a peek. So again, you can watch my entry here. This is me breathing up. I'm, I'm hanging on to the motor. When I'm breathing up, eyes are closed, completely relaxed. I'm trying to relax every muscle in my body. I'm hanging on to the motor, gun in one hand. That way I can just truly close my eyes and almost start to meditate and really try to lower my heart rate and relax as best that I can. When I'm ready to drop, I do those few flutter kicks, use that momentum, roll, kick forward, gun up against me, tuck my head and down I go. And if you get more serious into free diving, there's so many little details that affect your dives, especially if you get into the competitive world. Uh, Spearfishing is a little different, but um, there is a lot to learn out there. And if you're interested in getting into free diving, I highly recommend taking a class. Um, but on my way down, see a grouper, start to line up, and it's being just a little squirmy, and I came in a little hotter than I wanted to. Um, just kind of sinking down on it and just back and forth back and forth and i thought it was going to run behind this rock and i didn't want to i didn't want to lose it so i let it i let it fly and i hit it hit its mark just not the shot i'd like to get i'd like to get stone shots obviously but can't be perfect every time but um yeah i was pretty thrilled about that nice black grouper i think this drop was about close to 70 feet I believe I have to look at my watch here briefly. Brain and bleed as always. So looking at my watch here, the reason we wear these is it gives us a surface interval, dive time, and dive depth. And my dive depth was 71 feet and a, a minute eight. <sighs> Not a monster, but it's an eater. Just over 25 inches. I, uh, didn't see a whole lot going on and sometimes you just got to take what you're given and uh, the older I get quite honestly not as worried about shooting the monsters and I realize that a lot of times the smaller ones taste better so that is our last grouper that's more than a few dinners we're not going to take any more than that uh, because we're out here the water is actually pretty blue I think we may do a wahoo drift Miss Madeline wants a wahoo over a grouper so <laughs> we're gonna go take a peek but we're gonna get this on ice and we'll hop in and do a couple drifts We gonna set up on a Wahoo drift. Uh, I tried to get Malin to drift first, but she said she's too cold. It is a whopping 68 degrees out and the water temperature is 76. I think she's hypothermic. But um, yeah, I'm gonna set up. Water is a little off colored, but uh, we're gonna do a drift and give it a whack and see if we can get lucky. A lot of people, when it comes to Wahoo, obsess over the moon phases and all that stuff. Um, my personal opinion, I don't think it makes a difference. I've shot them every opposite moon phase you can think of during full moons, new moons, half moon, every every moon phase you can think of, I've shot Wahoo. Um, the biggest thing I look for is I like the water to be clear. Uh, we're using flashing devices, so the clear, the more clear the water, the bigger bubble you have of range that the fish can see it and hopefully come in. 
Uh, if you have 100 foot of vis, you have a 200 foot bubble. If you have 50 foot of vis, you have a 100 foot bubble. So that's um, just something to think about. But I've shot them in everything from 30 foot of vis all the way up to 100 foot of vis. Uh, it just really depends. You just, I personally think if you're in the water drifting, I think there's an opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's uh, one of the most sought after fish and people are always asking how to find them, where to find them. It's just, quite frankly, you got to get in the water and put your time in. Hey, where did they go? Yeah, they're probably too cold. So we had done two drifts, probably a total of an hour and 45 minutes. Um, decided to move spots uh, and set up for a third and final drift. All right, third, tar third time's the charm, baby. I think it's been four times. No, this is three. No, no. I'm gonna go get him. So as I said, new spot, third drift. Um, I set up, I swam over to the flasher and turned my camera off. And you will see what happens next. Not Two minutes after I looked down and there's a really nice walk it snuck up on me I wasn't even I didn't even see it come in I, I looked down and it was sitting right underneath me so first thing I do is drop to their depth as I'm on the way down I realize this fish is really friendly just kind of lean into it and it swims right up to me and this thing takes off like a rocket buried that float completely big one come get me you're probably gonna have to drive me Come get me, you're probably gonna have to drive me over there. He took off like a rocket. <sighs> oh, never mind. Just get this, uh, get the gun and the flashers. So after seeing that fish take off the way it did, I had assumed that Malin was gonna have to run me over to it. And it uh, did a really quick, fast run and then just kind of stopped and came up to the surface. I looked over and I could see the buoy close enough to me. And like I said, I like to chase the fish if I can. Makes it just, a little, the makes it just a little more intense. But um, buoy's not moving much. Uh, the, the float line's flattened out, so it tells me that the fish came up to the surface actually. Uh, so I get a hold of that line and start working. And I tell everyone, you can see I'm being towed right now. If you... Uh, if you ever do this, you have to be willing to bet your fish on it. I saw the shot, I know, knew how it hit. It was right behind the gill plate, went all the way through. Um, typically let the fish fight the buoy because you're worried about if it's a thin shot, it may tear out. Um, but people always ask me if they should hang onto the buoy or not. And I always tell them, if you're willing to bet your fish on it, it's okay to hang onto the buoy. And uh, like I said, I saw it, I was confident. Um, so I let it take me for a ride. <clears throat> And it seemed the fish tired out pretty quickly. Um, just did those two quick runs, and uh, I started working on it a little bit. And I always talk about line management. As I'm pulling this line up, I'm throwing it behind me, uh, making sure it's not getting wrapped around my fins. I see people sit still and pull it straight up around them in a bundle. Do not do that. If a shark comes up and grabs it, you get in serious trouble. And right now we're just playing a little bit of give and take. It's the fish is kind of running. But I can tell it's tired again. I knew I had a good shot, so I don't mind putting a little pressure on it. And this never gets old. I've shot probably over a hundred of these, and every single one is equally, if not more, exciting than the next. Just something special about it for me. You can see the shaft went all the way through the fish. That's what we call stringing the fish um, when the fish is on the string and not the shaft. Great shot placement, didn't mess up any of the meat. And uh, you gotta be careful around these fish's teeth. Their teeth are actually razor blade sharp. So you gotta be very careful. I always try and get in the throat or the gills, that way I can control the head. I don't have any, have to worry about that, that mouth coming around and hitting me.
Third time's the charm, I told you. <laughs> Little New Year's Eve special. Nice one. Nice, too. nice. Good job, babe. Two drifts, didn't see a single thing. Third drift, I was in the water for what? Three, four minutes? Two seconds. Ooh! Yeah. Those teeth. Always hold them right here in the gill. That way you can control the head. Wow. This was pretty neat. I'd never seen this on a Wahoo. I've seen it on other fish, but uh, the swim bladder, which actually helps them regulate their buoyancy, uh, was actually still inflated. I think under stress, they can't uh, regulate it as good. And you can see this swim bladder is still full of air. That was pretty wild. A nice one. Oh, look at the pattern right here. Big boy. That is a healthy one. Over here, babe. Wow. Fish. Oh, watch, it, watch your head there. <laughs> nice shot. We're going to end 2024 or 2023 with a bang. That is all we need. Um, we've got fish for the next few weeks. We're gonna go home and get warm and snuggly. And get home and get warm no and snuggly. No more drifts. That's what we're gonna do. No more, no more drifts. <laughs> hey, well. well, that is a beautiful fish. Always a treat. I, will, I don't think I'll ever get tired of shooting Wahoo. Did shoot two drifts, didn't see a single fish, and third drift, third time's a charm. Jumped in, I was in the water two or three minutes, and. End up with. Yeah, baby. That is a beautiful one. We'll see you back at the house. All right, and we are in the kitchen. Um, so, truth be told, tonight we're going to be cooking grouper ribs. These are from my charter yesterday. Uh, I did not want to count my chickens before they hatched. So I did save some grouper offcuts. I've got the head, um, some ribs, and some racks and stuff. Uh, just in case we couldn't find our groupers today, but obviously we were successful. But um, we do have some rib cuts. Um, and pretty much what I do with these, take a fillet down, cut the rib off, and cut the skin off. And there's still meat there, but the difference is there's bone every you know half inch or so. But there is a lot of meat there, and all you do is take a knife down between each bone. And I won't show you all of that, but I'll give you a quick demo. You can see... Right there's a bone, right there's a bone. So I just go right in between them. And once you find the groove, you just follow it straight down. Sorry. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe there's something on your face. No. Um, I've done this before. Um, if you haven't tried the ribs from fish, you got to give it a try, especially on bigger fish. Uh, there's a lot of meat left there. Um, one of my favorite ways to do ribs, depending on the fish, is smoking them. Uh, when you get a fattier fish like a grouper, um, you can do anything to them. You can throw them in the oven, you can pan fry, pan fry them, you can smoke them, you can pretty much do anything. So, there we are. Uh, so what we got going is, um, all these are diced up. I need a hand towel. Um, got some olive oil and a cast iron. Uh, tonight we're going to go with kind of a, a meaty fish theme. And what I mean is we're gonna season the fish almost like it's a steak and we're actually gonna put some chimichurri on it. Um, got some Mach McCormick Montreal steak seasoning. And what I actually did was I threw this in the Nutribullet and it already sucking up the humidity, but um, I threw it in the Nutribullet because this is really coarse and it doesn't stick very well to fish. Um, so what we're gonna do, like I said, I threw it in the Nutribullet Blend it up a little and just do a little bit on each side. Not too much because this seasoning is very strong. And like I said, it, it wouldn't stick as well uh, if it was real coarse. So I just threw it in the measure bullet and thinned it out a bit. All right, there we are. Just a light seasoning. See, it sticks a little better really coarse the way it comes. So cast iron, olive oil. 
Yeah, medium low heat. Yeah, maybe a little higher. Medium heat. I want these to crisp up a little bit. that we're gonna make uh, chimichurri everyone does this a little different um, this is actually a recipe I got from Will but I hate chopping all those little things so I just blend it in the neutral bullet I know that's kind of frowned upon but that's the way that we're gonna do it so I've got one whole bundle of uh, parsley six little cloves of garlic um, I like a little heat in ours always try your chili first you never know. Some chilies are lava, some of them taste like bell peppers. <laughs> that one tastes like a bell pepper. So I'm going to put the whole thing in there with the seeds. It's so weird. Mm -hmm. Smell it. Like normally that would... It's got a little, but it's, it's not much. So we're going to put the whole thing in there. bit of olive oil and if you have a different way to do chimichurri do it however you like I'm pretty sure it's frowned upon like I said to blend it like this I think it's supposed to be chopped I'd probably about three quarters of a cup of olive oil it all depends on how much you got a little bit of red wine vinegar a little bit of lemon juice be enough. It looks like I'm missing something. Oil? Not that oil. I may not have enough oil, but I put oil. Is that icing? <laughs> just, just cover your face <laughs> icing and just lick it as it go? Yeah, lick it. See how it tastes. No, it's um, an oxygen mask. You want me to be my tester? Does it need more of? Whoa. Is it bitter? I would say that. It's super lemony. You need more garlic? I almost need more garlic. Yeah. Definitely needs more garlic, a little more red wine vinegar. We don't cook with recipes. Cook to taste. Alright, so I added a little more garlic, and I forgot salt and pepper. That's what I was forgetting. But that's much better. That's why I didn't like it. I don't know. Forgot the salt. I kind of like it lemony though. I don't know if lemon's a normal ingredient, but I like the lemon flair to it. Ooh. No, that's good. It's also like more smooth. Yeah. We've got some sweet potatoes going on in the air fryer. Santa Claus brought Madeline an air fryer. It's literally the best thing ever. I cannot believe we're this late to the game. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> apparently we missed it. Pretty much, the, we've been making every meal in it, or like something in it, every day. Yeah, pretty awesome. If you don't have one, look into them. Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. Can't see them. Oh, wow. Hmm? We're going to do a little thing here. I was going to do a Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Little crusty potatoes. Uh, um, you're in the way. <laughs> oh, man. I always forget how good these ribs are. Trust me, if you get a grouper or a gobia, African pompano, anything, anything with big ribs, try it. You will not regret it. Oh my God. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. 
like chimichurri. I'm just going on the potatoes too. Wow, all my hard work and the flavor and seasoning just it's just gonna be elevated. They're gonna be friends. Friends, okay. We're going in. Do I look like a five star restaurant or what? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yep. Yeah. With your sweatshirt on? Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is like a candy cane. Little... That seasoning's not, I thought that seasoning was going to be a little too much. It's actually nice. Mmm. Oh, yes. That's oh, that's perfect. What a flavor count. Mm-hmm. Wow. This just falls off the bone. Not, yeah, the chimichurri is perfect. I never regret making ribs. <laughs> Fish ribs. Any ribs. Yeah, any ribs. Mm. I like that they're still super tender, but I have a little bit of that crunch. But that's what I'm saying is like you can mm -hmm. just cook the crap out of them and they don't over they don't get over I'm sure eventually they would, but I don't really have a time, I just kinda of flip them whenever. Mmm. Oh yeah. That's so good. That's a good time. Just don't eat the bone. You do not want that. Sharp little boogers. Oh. What did you say? No, it's like a little. <laughs> no, that was like a little sliver. It oh, fell man. off of it. Well, that is all we have for this year. You're putting this out before New Year's? Well, it's after, but it's New Year's Eve. No, it's. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's all we have. Do you have anything you want to share about the year? There's so, <laughs> There's so much. I don't know. <laughs> Where do you even The words don't even come out. <laughs> wow. Well. What about you? Do you have anything to share? I had a great time. That's all I want to share. I had an awesome time. Um. I guess just thanks so much. Seriously, thank you for continuing to watch and support. Mm -hmm. How long have we been doing this? Like four years? You've been doing it for a long time. I just started saying hi like recently. <laughs> the last six months. <laughs> um, so that's all we have. We're, ran we're rambling. But thank you for the support and the love. We hope you have a wonderful 2024. The videos will continue. Mondays at 6 p.m. We've got a lot of changes coming up with merch and just life in general. And we'll keep you updated on it. Making a lot of changes. Very exciting. So that is all. We're going to enjoy this and we'll see you next Monday. Bye. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> I'm just Maybe testing. I'm like just testing sauce. you. You have all the same stuff that I have. But I don't have like, all the sauce. But... Mm, okay. Ooh, yeah. That's a good move. All right? Chimichurri on anything is good. <laughs>